Welcome and welcome again. to everyone. I see several visitors among us. We're happy, glad that you're here on this extended holiday weekend. We like to preach here, or I like to preach in multi-week series that lasts over several weeks and give a kind of general topic. It's something that I've really come to enjoy. And to kick off the new year, we have a series that everyone we think will like. We're excited about it. We're calling it Secrets of Every Happy Family. You know, every one of us is from a family, and our families are as diverse as the number of people here in the church. You know, we are diverse inside. Maybe you come from a big, big family, and maybe you're an only child, or came from a very small family. And many people my age and a little older came from kind of medium-sized families, you know, three, four, or five kids. Well, I'm the oldest of five boys, and and uh, I'd like to describe the kind of dynamic that those medium-sized families all kind of share. So I'm the oldest, and typically, here's the description of the oldest child. So your parents didn't know what they were doing. You were the guinea pig. They broke you in. They were obsessed. And as a result, you have OCD, and you're in therapy. So that's the oldest child. <laughs> and then, typical description of the middle child. The middle child is unloved. The middle child is ignored. They weren't paid attention to. Nobody loves them. And you know what? That wasn't a feeling. It was a fact. But you know what? You're 40 years old, so get over it now. And then there's the youngest child. <laughs> the youngest child. You could get away with everything. Your parents had pretty much given up by then. They were exhausted. So you got away with murder. You were spoiled. And you know what the rest of us want to say to you, youngest child? We resent you. So anyway, <laughs> maybe that describes the dynamic in your family. But our families are all different, all sizes and shapes. Maybe you grew up in a traditional household where the husband worked and the mom was a stay-at-home mom. Maybe you're a single parent. And maybe during the course of following this series, you're living out family life in real time. Your kids are still at home. You're dealing in you know, a very difficult season now in life, trying to raise your kids in school and juggling all kinds of things. Or maybe you are single by choice as an adult like me, and you hear the series and your reference point is more to your family of origin or your extended family. Or maybe as well you're a single person hoping to get married or maybe hoping to get remarried. And your, your uh, hope is for the future and not as much about the past. And then there are those who are senior citizens. You're, you're done raising your kids and hopefully you're enjoying now or looking forward to enjoy seeing your grandkids and your great-grandkids. Well, all of us can relate to the, fa- the experience of family life as diverse as our experiences are. We all share something in common. And th- it's this. Family is not a neutral emotion, like the word brother or sister or mother or father, husband, wife, aunt and uncle, cousin. They're not neutral terms. They all have an emotional attachment to, to us, very personally. There may be many, many fond memories of your family of origin growing up in your childhood. You received much love and experienced much love and nourishment and support. Or maybe, sadly, you know, there are wounds and hurts from your past life, from your family of origin, and you maybe put off your family a little bit because some people in the family maybe box you in in some way. They still see you as that 12-year-old, and you've grown up. You're a different person than you were then. But for that reason or other reasons, you might stay away from family. And then in every family, I think, there are unmet expectations. There's a certain unmet expectation. This is typical for all families. And you know, for example, maybe during the holidays, there was an unmet expectation in the past few weeks. And that was, you had this great plan to bring everyone together for Christmas. And unfortunately, this newest variant of COVID just put all those plans on hold. And maybe your, your kids said, no, not this year again. And that's hurtful and disappointing to you. But my point is that all of us have emotion, emotion, very strong feelings and emotion about family life. 
Oh, there's a big promise in this series. The big promise in this series is that we have the secrets to every happy family. The Russian author Leo Tolstoy said this. He said, every happy family is happy in the same way, but every unhappy family is unhappy in its own way. So I don't promise that in the course of this series that all family problems in your life will be resolved or that there will be the perfect solution to everything that you might be struggling with. But I do want to put forward today, to kick off the series, some templates, some basic principles that I think can be universally applied to all of our family life. And it's just that from the get-go, I want to say this, you know, if, if it's a tough subject and you feel like certain things don't apply to you, just hold on. Don't tune out what we have to say here. Because, first of all, you could maybe share these insights and some information from this message with other people, with your kids, with other family members. And second, always, always remember that there's no relationship that it cannot be healed with God's love. There's no reconciliation and peace that cannot occur, particularly in your own heart and mind. And maybe that's where God wants to bring healing and reconciliation uh, re with regard to your thoughts on family. So, what's the first secret of every happy family? First secret of every happy family is this. Accepting the messiness. Accepting the messiness of family life with grace and with flexibility. With grace and with flexibility. Our families are not the ideal. None of our families are the ideal. You know, there's a big gap, if you think about it, between the ideal and the real. Between what that ideal of family life that you want and hope for and what the actual reality is. But you know what? That's the case even in the Bible from the very beginning. God's, the, the story of God in His Word in the Bible is the story of dysfunctional families in the very beginning. Adam and Eve experienced their one son murder another son. Noah was an alcoholic. Abraham had all kinds of family problems and infidelity. And then there's David, the adulterer. My point is that the story of God's Word is a story of dysfunctional families, yet God entering into that messiness. And that's the story of our life, isn't there? You know, as a basic principle, it just should be said is that there are no perfect families. Why are there no perfect family? Because there are no perfect people. Accepting the messiness is the first step. And you know, I, I would just suggest this, if it's helpful to you, and with regard to accepting the messiness. You know, a lot of, of discord and dysfunction in families comes down to that lack, not meeting expectation. You know, someone disappoints us. And that's so hurtful within the family life. I, do, I might just suggest this. Maybe adjust your expectation. That could be helpful. Oh, for example, I'll just describe myself. I've come to accept in 13 years as a priest that I'm not always going to be home for the holiday. And that was a tough thing for me to first deal with, especially in the crazy holiday schedule like this with Christmas being on a Saturday, New Year's being on a Saturday. It just keeps me away from my, my family. And I've also accepted this as a priest, that not all my family is that religious, actually. You, you might be surprised. Wow, Father's family is not all that religious? Well, that's the case. And when I was newly ordained 13 years ago, I thought that they would be calling me all the time for all these different events, and I would be around them all the time. And I've had to adjust that expectation because, you know what, they're not calling me. So I need, to, I need instead to go to them. So the first principle, the first secret of every happy family, accepting the messiness and maybe just adjusting one's expectation. Here's the second secret of every happy family. Mutual respect. Mutual respect. Well, this is a big one, of course. You know, and I, and I think it begins with God. Respect for God. We can respect for God and His authority in the household. It's the responsibility of the head of the household to keep God in the household in His authority out of respect for Him. And, you know, so often parents, we see this at the church, they eventually give up 
on, on bringing God into the household because it gets harder and harder and harder and harder as the kids get older. Don't give up because in seeding and giving up God's authority, you're opening the door to things that are not from God. But mutual respect begins with the head of the household. If that's the father, the husband, it begins with you. And I would say this, dad's husband's, have a zero tolerance policy for disrespect. Have a dear, zero tolerance policy for disrespect toward your wife or toward your kids. And that includes complaining, excessive complaining. That includes gossip. How destructive gossip can be within family life. Of course, the same thing is true for wives in mutual respect toward their husband and kids toward their parents, even parents toward their kids. You know, there's a difference in uh, everyone is sarcastic at times, you know, and we like to be playful with sarcasm. But there's a difference between playful sarcasm and passive aggressive sarcasm. You all know that. So if you want to respect and, and honor that respect in the family, clearly communicate. Say what you need to say. Speak the truth. And kids as well, it's not just honoring your mother and father when you're young and in the house, but it's when you're older too, as adults, to honor and respect your parents as senior citizen. That mutual respect is so important. So accepting the messiness, mutual respect. And then the third secret of a happy family is this, a kind of commitment to a larger purpose. A kind of commitment to a larger purpose. Uh, so many families, I think, today are just trying to survive. You're trying to survive a difficult season personally in your life. You're trying to survive this difficult season of COVID. But just by coming to the church today, just by worshiping with us online, you're committing to an important purpose, a higher purpose, something beyond your family life. Because that fight for a healthy family goes beyond your household. It affects the extended family. It affects the community. It affects the church. And it's cliche to say, but it's true. The family is the bedrock of society. The family is bedrock to society. And that fight you have for your family is worth it. It has an amazing impact. And if you, if you don't believe this or you're skeptical about this, just maybe think from the perspective of a teacher or a coach. Every teacher knows that a, a student is the best student they can be when they come from a loving, supportive environment. And every athlete is the best athlete they can be when they come from a loving, supporting environment. It being part of something bigger and, that, and focusing on that purpose and fighting for healing and for reconciliation and for love in your family can make all the difference. Well, there's three basic secrets or principles of every happy family. It's about accepting the messiness, it's about mutual respect, and it's about being part of something beyond yourself, a higher purpose. My friends, in the course of this series, we're going to come back to these principles, but these, it's really no big secret at all. It's, it's simply the love and support of one another. And today, it's all appropriate. We begin the new year, we're still in the Christmas season that we celebrate this, we kick off this series on this Feast of the Epiphany. The Feast of the Epiphany is about these magi who made this long and arduous journey following the star to essentially go to a family. The whole Christmas story is about a family. And here's what Matthew tells us when the magi arrived. The magi saw the child with Mary his mother. They prostrated themselves and did him homage. Then they opened their treasures and offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. They followed the star. They worshipped the new king, a king who was revealed in the context of a family. Well, Christmas is about the gift of salvation that has come to us in family life. The family, the holy family, Joseph, the blessed mother, our Lord. Joseph, who had to show great courage to protect his family as the foster father, the blessed mother who had to show perseverance and strength you know, to perhaps war off those rumors. Why is she pregnant? Those, those prying eyes that were looking at her. These are characters that, that showed God's love 
in the midst of a mess, a difficulty, a challenge, the mess of regular family life. Nothing extraordinary about their, their life. Well, my friends, we meditate today as we continue the Christmas season on Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. And our families, we all know, are imperfect reflections of God's love. You know, God has chosen to reveal Himself in the family. Our families are certainly far from perfect. But in that perfection, imperfection, in that imperfection, there's a desire. There's a desire for something more. So the, the invitation this week, my friends, is just to commit to this series. Commit to this series. Follow us for the next five weeks. We're going to talk about the roles of fathers and mothers and the importance of grace and family life. You can follow us uh, in person at all masses or online. And of course this week, let's just lift up our families in our prayer. From our family to yours, I wish you a blessed new year and many prayers. My friend, because God has entered into this world in a family, we get to participate in our family life in God's work of salvation. How amazing that is. May God bless you and your families with health and prosperity and peace. Amen.